Norman, I couldn't be happier to be with you today. It's been a long road. Um, some is for some, it's more of a long road than others. I know your journey has been uh, very long. Uh, but for us, we've gone back and forth and we've set this path ahead of us to do a podcast series together. And here we are. We're doing it. We're doing the <laughs> podcast series. So I'm going to take a stab at what I think this, this podcast series uh, means and what the intentions are. And, and, uh, and then I'll throw it over to you and you, can, and you can tell me if that makes sense. Because essentially, this is your podcast series, right? Okay. Yeah, sounds sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So so here it is. We we've had the opportunity to get to know each other over several months. I, you know, I, I own a media company, and I get to meet all sorts of people. We're we're a breeding ground for uh, for thought leadership, right? This is this <laughs> is what Planksip does, right? And and I have to say that I was in awe of of Norman from pretty close to the first uh you know few minutes of of meeting you right we happened to meet on a social club and then very shortly during the social club meeting we actually decided that we were going to do something like this and this is the fruition of where we've arrived at right yeah that's it's 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 been a very fruitful journey i think even in these short period of time and i think that a lot of meetings like this and introductions don't really happen by accident. I think they happen to bring people together for a greater cause other than them, themselves, really. So, right, right, right. So, you know, I do have a chance of talking with lots of different people, and I hear all sorts of stories of uh, overcoming adversity, problems. Uh, challenges in your life. And quite frankly, I haven't had too many of those. I mean, for the most part, I've had a very well-adjusted upbringing, uh, no physical. I'm the kind of person that goes to the doctor's office and the doctor says, yep, you're healthy. Yep. I don't see anything wrong with you. No problem. Keep, you know, but that's not the case with Norman. Now we're going to keep some people guessing on this initial episode because you wouldn't be able to tell from Norman that he had any kind of medical history or past, right? So let's let's leave that out of the equation just for a few minutes. This overcoming that Norman has uh, has has arrived at, right? He's he's overcome quite the hurdle. And the summation that I would say would be important for the audience and for any listeners is to say, Norman wants to give back. Norman really, really wants to give back to a community and he wants to do it in the form of um, a combination of inspiration and uh, storytelling, I think, right? Maybe more on the inspiration side and less on the storytelling, but let's face it, story is a part of the equation. And I try and imagine the kind of journey that you went through and have gone through in your life. And I think to myself, that's a story that needs to be told again and again. And um, I think you're the right man to do it by golly. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. You know, um, I think it, it, it is something very dear to my heart when it comes down to it, not just for myself, but, because I think that it gives a chance to empower others in the process of actually showing other, everybody else. And even those that, even though our stories are different, that in a sense, we all have things that we have to overcome, even though they're not the same obstacles in life, but we're all given adversities to help shape us and make us stronger. And it's really about what we do with those adversities and if I can give back to somebody else to see that and show somebody that things are possible to overcome, then that's what I aim to do. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've, I've, I've had a few guests and 
podcasts that I that I record with various different people, and I'll tell you one thread that comes from uh, uh, from another guest, and uh, this has to do with assuming responsibility, right? And there's a wise tradition that says everybody has adversity that they face in their life, some more than others. Um, but the first path to overcoming or moving towards prosperity and flourishing in your life begins with the self. Um, would you agree with that? I would. And I, the reason I do is that was a very defining moment in my life and not really even just one moment, a series of moments all kind of spread out through a period of time in my life. But that is when probably the biggest internal shift took place and it really started to pick up momentum with being supported, with not only taking responsibility, but making a decision that was in my best interest for once in my life. So. Yeah, let's talk, let's talk about that for a little bit. Um, you know, what what was when was that point when you decided that you know now's the time? Well, you know, without giving away too much, and with leaving a little bit to keep us all guessing, like you suggested, there was a period of time in my life that I had a very monumental shift in my physical life here on this planet and afterwards there was a series of events that were out of my control um that i was kind of left to just accept as is and and learn to deal with them as they came until i really got a grasp of things and in the process of that was a relationship and that relationship ended up being one of my biggest teachers in this life and i say that because it taught me some of my greatest assets that I now have. Um, But within that, it also spurred what I would consider an awakening within myself to really take a look at what I was thinking and feeling compared to what I was actually experiencing. And in those midst and moments, it really caused me to notice a lot of things that I had not really put a lot of attention to and taken responsibility for in the sense that I was passing blame, justifying other people's actions and all these grown up adult things that a lot of people really go through life making excuses for whether it be their friends, their spouses, their partners, their kids, even, you know, in these things. And for me, that gave me a chance. And it was the, the gestalt fancy word of the beginning of a major shift within my consciousness as a human. Focus on that word. Did you say, did you say gestalt? Yeah. Okay. So you, yeah. A gestalting is uh you know, piecing together with uh, bits of information, I suppose, right? Is it like you get the same sort of meaning? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a. It, it's basically the beginning of of something. It's a. It's a starting point. Yes. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try and take this a little bit. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give everybody just a little bit of a peek into your into your background. It was it, it's a medical issue and. Uh, and it's something that you were born with and that you had corrected with a, a, a surgery later in, in, in life. But um, when was that surgery and when did it take place? What age was that? Uh, that surgery took place in uh, June, uh, June to mid-July of 2009. And I was uh, about, I was 30 years old. Um, yeah, I was, I was 30 years old. And how old are you now? Uh, 41, actually. So you've had 10 years to adapt. Uh, tell me about the first couple of years, and I'm mostly concerned about the, um, 
the emotional roller coaster that you were on, you had mentioned to me something about having to cope with emotions again for the second time. Yes. Um, you know, the, the medical condition and the, uh, the, the surgery that I underwent basically altered my emotional state of being. And it caused me to be disrupted and have to need to go through the process of basically being re-hardwired again. And um, I was basically, not basically, I was left to my own accord to do so, where I kind of got bypassed within the medical system, unfortunately, where you would think that you would have a lot of different resources at your fingertips. And somebody would say, well, this guy really could use some help on a different level than just us doing this and this to him and giving him pills or whatever it may be and a little bit of physical therapy or, you know, and whatnot. But I was that one that kind of unfortunately slipped through the cracks mm -hmm. in a sense mm -hmm. and was kind of a byproduct of the downsides of what can happen when things are overlooked within the system. And it cost me a serious at minimum five years of my life of basically rebuilding and rewiring myself in my own accord without the proper tools, resources, and help to do so on a professional level when I really needed my most. Were there any, <laughs> were there any like a, a doctor or, or, or somebody that seemed to be receptive to the, to the, to the growth that you were um, experiencing? Like, is there anybody that, that uh, like a family doctor that can say, what I think everybody that meets Norman now, or at least I know I feel, is that this guy's got his head screwed on correct here, right? <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> uh, you no. Norman. You, I, I've, I've said that. I, like, you become part of my talking points because I can't, I, I'm really happy that we became friends. And I, yeah. and I say, you know what, we're, you know, we're gonna be working with Norman um, and, and producing a series. And uh, and I couldn't be happier because I said Norman has his head screwed on straight uh, more than most people that I actually come across. Actually, I, I don't want to toot my own horn, but we can get into some of the more intimate details of some of the things that went on, obviously, at a later time. But there was a phrase that was said to me that I turned out pretty good compared to what I've been through, because other cases um, of individuals going through almost identically the same situation came out on completely the opposite side of the spectrum. Oh, And yes, I have had, you know, not the easiest path by all means, but I consider myself, if you believe in luck, to be lucky because it could have come out a whole lot worse so with that i count my blessings every day and i feel that i am i am pretty well rounded for what i've been through myself and a lot of it has to do with my mindset and and, and my perception of what i would consider to be life you know has been the bigger thing in the whole picture but there was never one doctor to go back and answer your question, that really gave me a professional opinion. And yes, people that are closest to me that remember the Norman from before and know the Norman afterwards can account for that difference. Like my oldest daughter, obviously my mother and my sister and some of my other immediate family and somewhat the few close friends that I still have around from before that time. But on a professional level, Nobody really stuck with me long enough. And at one point, my neurologist that helped me got the surgery actually looked at me because I felt the responsibility, not only for myself, maybe my own sound, you know, as I grew out of the, the process and grew myself, I felt like I should be checking in with him once in a while. So for a couple of years after the, the major surgery, I did go to him and see him, you know, probably, I don't know how many times now, but at least two to four times. And one of the last times I saw him, he basically said, well, why are you even here? Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I kind of knew at that moment, like I was kind of hanging on by a thread and it was for my own well-being or justification of whatever it was. But that was kind of like 
him cutting the cord for both of us. But other than that, like they never really, you know, said this guy's got a good head on his shoulders, you know, or anything like that. So tell me about, tell me about mom. Hopefully she doesn't uh, mind this. Does she, does she, is she really happy with, with the self that you've actually grown into now? Or is she really, you know, proud? Right. I mean, yeah, I want to know that. She is. And, um, you know, she's very proud of me because I've come a long ways. And I think that, you know, I, I, I can never know what it was like in her shoes growing up, having a son with a disability, you know, that was potentially at, at periods of time in my life, very life altering and whatnot, you know, because my mother had her own challenges and still does like a lot of our families do. But within that sense, I've grown so much and, and as, uh, it, it really makes me feel like at times it's almost intimidating to her because out of the family, I've invested so much of into my own development and growth because I, that was in my path. I was kind of had my hand forced to me to a degree. And that has a way of really putting somebody in a place without having too much of a choice. We always have a choice, but when you're kind of thrown into a situation, it's a lot different than if you're just kind of given the choice and eased into it on your own accord. And my mother has chosen it to a degree to just kind of shovel her way through life, but I'm a great example for her. But at the same time, I think it's somewhat intimidating actually. And she does support me. In, in the process and a lot of people do but it has, has also caused people to kind of I feel look at me a little bit differently because of some of the changes that I've chosen to make for myself yeah, yeah. I, I think that this idea of a of, of a correct path and a, an example sometimes can be inspiring but the onus is again on the individual to somewhat reinvent themselves yeah. and um, you can't, I mean, you can, you can give somebody a very prescriptive path, but I think that we are, and this is a little bit of my kind of hypothesis that we, we are, are novelty sinking, uh, entities, right? We, we have to go out into life, into the world and try and differentiate and figure out our own path. Really, we have to do this. This is, uh, I don't know if it's quite at the level of a biological imperative, but y you you'll read a self help book or um, an advice column, or I mean, heck, even a horoscope, or you know, some of the you know that you're trying to apply it to your own life and you're trying to make it your own, right? So I can see how if if what Norman has done is something that is almost unsurmountable, right? It's just, it's just so incredible that it's all at once it's uh, inspiring, but also scary because, you know, some people are at the base camp looking up at the peak of the mountain, right? And Everest is a big hill to climb. Um, <laughs> right. It's uh you know, it is a it is a big challenge. So um, I know your organization is called Sink or Swim. And I think that was important because as you were describing some of these challenges um, for you uh, and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong here. But for you, the idea of the organization Sink or Swim wasn't to tell someone else to sink or swim. It was really what you were faced with was to sink or swim. Right. Is that the case? Yes. And you mean, uh, you mean sink your soul. Oh, sorry. Sink your soul. It, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Yes. You know, and that came to me kind of at a, a moment of growth when I was like, you know, how can I, it was like a defining moment of like, you know, how can I start to like publicly make something that somebody can kind of identify with you know self-growth and and these things and you know you can take it however, however you want it to whether it be on a spiritual side or you know um a consciousness or whatever it is but yes it is it, john maxwell has a has a quote and 
it says that we have upward, we have uphill dreams and downhill habits. I'll really let that sink in for a second. Like, listen to that. And that really says that if you really interpret between the lines, it goes back to everything in life as a decision and perception. So we're faced with hundreds of decisions every day. Yeah. Of whatever we come across. And it's up to us of how we perceive that to be good or bad or indifferent. And there is really no right or wrong, but it's what we want to take and do with it type of a deal, you know, and it's all up to us. And every decision we make leads us towards a different point. And if you would have made a different decision, it would have took you a different way. And I challenge the status quo of life. I always knew it was in me beforehand. I didn't have the confidence. I lacked the know-how and a lot of things because I was living inside of this what if shell. And at a certain point in my life, post major surgery, I was faced with multiple decisions to make. Some were forced on me and out of my control and others I willingly brought on to myself, knowing full well that of maybe not fully what I was getting into, but knowing that I was going to be stepping into the unknown to a degree, which is not a common thing for a lot of people. And there was nothing wrong with going with the status quo if that works for everybody else. But for me, that didn't work and it still doesn't. And yes, life doesn't turn out exactly how you think it is. And you have to really kind of let go of that ideal. But at the same time, it has also allowed me and allotted me a lot of experience and knowledge to a degree to be able to help to give back to other people. Yeah. 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 Let's, uh, let's change the tempo a little bit of the, of, of the conversation. I just want to talk about COVID for a few minutes. Sure. Um, there's a lot of people that their lives have been really churned, right? Upside down. I mean, the whole world has been, you know, forced to reassess values. Um, you know, people have lost their jobs. People have died, obviously, uh, from, from, uh, the pandemic, but, I think that the the mindset isn't so much long term planning, right? Like, what is my, uh, what where are we going to be at five years from now? If you're sitting with your family and you're sitting at the table, you're trying to figure out what's our trajectory. Well, it seems like most families are thinking, what are we going to do for the next six months, <laughs> and and then then we'll kind of see and take inventory again. So. Um, in your process, while you were dealing with us, uh, this this journey, and obvious, I think it must have been lots of ups and downs. Um, <laughs> yeah. So is that, do you have more of like a, you know, you say, I'm not really trying to put too much equity in the long-term plans. I'm trying to deal with what's right in front of me. Is that is that something that resonates? Yes, and it's I, I I can say that it's it's a it's learning balance because I think it's important to have some sort of goal in the future and have some sort of idealism of where you're going. But I think it's important to remain flexible in how and when we get there. Because if you don't have some sort of goal, we kind of tend to meander through life. But Meander, yeah. Yeah. You know, and I did it for a good portion of my life. And there are times that I still find myself wanting to go back to that because we are, no matter how and much we invest in ourselves, train ourselves, school ourselves, whatever you want to say, we are creatures of habit. And until you really get down and really eradicate all those old conditioning and habits and ways of thinking, feeling, and being, it's very easy for you to kind of let our guard down and find ourselves straying again into a sense. And I think that I, I have a vision of where I would be in five years, but I have learned to, to live in the moment 
and create in the here and now. Because if I hold so tight to that, say, five-year mark and am so rigid on the idealism of how I get there and, and all these other details, I really lose track of everything that's right here in front of me and the opportunity. And I don't know who said it. It might even be an anonymous quote, but it says, he who has the most flexibility controls the system. So the more fluid we are by going through life and can kind of not just settle for what you're given, but adapt and grow and be open to change and how things come and look at opportunities for what they present themselves to. I think we'll have a lot easier time growing through the process of where we're and we'll end up eventually where we're supposed to be anyways. Yeah, these are life yeah. skills, I think. <laughs> I, but, not, but not easily, not easily learned at all times, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, um, I know there's a, a thinker that is described by the academic community as being belligerent, <laughs> but his name is uh, Nassim Nicholas Taleb, and uh, he's he's got some really uh, popular books. Uh, he coined the phrase "the black swan," you know, and uh, and. He wrote a book on anti fragility, and so it it I think it had more to do with organizations. But the the goal is that y- you know you want to you want to um, not rely on the status quo or the norm because it's the the it's the people the organizations that have the skills that can adapt to complex and new situations are the ones that actually uh, thrive, and if if the last year and a half has taught us anything is that a lot of people are going to have to reinvent themselves. So the, the reason I purposely left out the, the specific medical conditions that, um, you know, were involved in your journey is that the, the everyday hero isn't Norman and uh, the everyday hero is, is, is the guy or the gal in the, in our community. And it's the one that can adapt. Um, I my hopes. I'm just my humble hopes, and I do. I really consider this to be your your show, um, because I don't know where it's going to adapt to. I don't know who else is going to be on the show. Uh, you know, we talked about this. We don't know how it's going to grow. If there's going to be an organization that's going to want to get involved at some point, um, but I like the concept of everyday heroes and. There is a, a plurality to that statement that this isn't an, it's not a Norman show. It's not a Norman CV. It's, it's, uh, you know, I think we can do things like bring up examples that we see in the news. We can, you know, talk about everyday heroes in, in communities, you know, all over North America and beyond. Right. Um, and so, I mean, my challenge to you, and I want it to be back to me as well, is that we'll we'll look for those kinds of stories and we'll try and put ourselves in impromptu sort of uh, what if scenarios in these in these people's lives and say, well, like if I was thrown into that situation, how would I cope? Norman, how would you cope? And I think this real world sort of example of of trading spaces or places with people, is something that would be really enjoyable. I think I'd actually have a good time doing that. You know, you're right. Like so many people follow the status quo in life. They go to work, they get up, they think the same thoughts, they do the same things, they're around the same people, their environment and their conditioning never changes. But then once in a while you get somebody that has an epiphany, has that difference to make an impact on the world in a different way, but, or they come from extreme adversity and decide to do something better with it. And I'm not just, it's not just about me. You're right. It's about everybody else out there. That's not standing up on their own two feet and screaming at the, at the rooftops. Look at me, look at me. But there are plenty of examples of people out there. I met a gentleman not so long ago has every excuse in the book to be a failure in life. He had one thing going for him 
when he was a, a little boy. And he's now, I believe, I don't know his exact age, but I'm pretty sure he's in his mid to late 20s, at least, uh, married. And, uh, but he is confined to a wheelchair, we'll just say that. Every excuse to be a failure in life and never to apply himself. But because his environment was conditioned of positive thinking and ways of being, he's educated, he's professional. And by looking at him, yes, he wears a suit because that's his choice. That's his, his picture of a self-image. But it's things like that. Until you actually talk to him, if you judge him by his cover, you would think this guy doesn't have anything. And it's guys like that that cause us to think differently and show curiosity and actually say, if that guy can do it, maybe there's, maybe I can. And something like that is infectious. And it, it spreads. You know, on that, on that note, Norman, I think that was a great summary. I was going to take it a little bit longer, but you guys, uh, <laughs> you know, anybody listening, that is a great summary. And I think it's a, it's a, a very uh, indicative uh, of what's to come in, the, in this series. So, so Norman, I want to thank you. And we're going to do this again really soon. And for anybody listening and for all of you people that, that, that want to grow with us together, we welcome you and possibly be a guest on the show. So uh, be engaged. Um, and remember, the way you orient your life and how you think can actually change your outcome. So this is a, a really interesting concept that we're going to be exploring and uh, we're excited. I am. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, I look forward to uh, doing this again very soon. Okay. Thanks, Norman. Thank you.